Amen. Good morning. Good to see all of you here this morning. Welcome home uh, to those online and those that are here today. If we haven't met, my name is Pastor Kyle. I'm one of the pastors here at the church. We're glad you're here this morning. I love that song. There's no way that he's going to let us down. And we're, we believe that. We count on that. Hey, we are in a series called Make It Count. Can you say that with me? Make It Count. And we've been talking about how God wants us to make it count. Pastor Adam kicked off the series a couple weeks ago talking about that we're called to make it count in our relationship with God. And then last week, we talked about making it count in our relationships with others. And the next couple of weeks, we're going to talk about making it count with the resources that God has given us. And specifically today, we're talking about making it count with our time and our talents. Let's say that together. Making it count with our time and our talents. Um, I was gone the first week that Adam spoke and he talked about his kids leaving the house and I was trying not to think of that for my own uh, life and yet my son's a couple years away or actually a year away from possibly leaving the house and some of you have already been through that experience and we think about different things. Some of you have a, a loved one that's passed on and you had a few days or moments with them before they passed and those are times that you make it count. And our life here on earth, we're called to make it count in our relationship with Jesus. I saw an illustration several years ago. I was at an event and every once in a while we'll do it here and I wanted to do it again today and I'm going to ask Pastor Adam to come and help me with this. But if you think of, of time and you think of making it count, I'm just going to have Adam stretch that out. Um, most of you, if you can't see, that's why I got glasses. <laughs> but if, if we have a little piece of red on the end of this rope here, and you think of making it count, the Bible tells us that our life on earth is like a vapor. And you know, when you think of a vapor, it's cold outside and you talk and, or somebody else talks and you can see, you know, this vapor come out of their mouth and that's how long, it's not very long, and that's how long the Bible kind of uses to describe our life here on earth, that it's a vapor. So if you think in terms of this illustration here, this rope represents, or this red piece of tape on this rope represents our life here on earth, and I couldn't find a never-ending rope, so I just went with this, okay? But if you imagine this rope that never ends, the rest of the rope, the rest of the rope is eternity, and the things and the, what we do here on earth um, determines not only our eternity, but others' eternity. And so we're called to make it count. Thank you, Adam, for helping me out. We're called to make it count because life is short. It's like a vapor. It doesn't last very long. And so the question that I ask myself, and I, and I would ask all of us today, is are we making it count? Well, I don't know um, if... Obviously, Moses passed away uh, a long time ago, but Moses was called to make it count. If you have your Bibles and you want to turn with me to Exodus uh, chapter 3, uh, beginning with verse 1, and we also have the scriptures on uh, the Church Center app under the message notes section, so we want to make you aware of that. But Moses, you know, it's like, uh, remember, some of you remember Kurt Warner who played for the Rams, and if you don't. Kurt Warner, he was a quarterback for the played for the Rams. But if they said, what were you doing before you played quarterback for the Rams? He said, I was sacking groceries at a grocery store. That's what I was doing. In fact, you, can, you know the story. So Moses, what was he doing before his calling? Actually, Moses was on the run before God called him. If some of you are familiar with Moses, some of you maybe heard the, heard the name Moses before. But Moses was called to set his, the people free um, and, but here's what he was doing before that. He had actually, he, he kind of had a complicated start, right? If somebody asks you about your family situation or, you know, some of you might say it's kind of complicated. Well, Moses's life kind of started complicated. Um, eventually his mom ends up sending him down the river, not because she was mad at him, but to save his life. And he land, he, uh, ends up being nurtured, um, and at, at Pharaoh's, uh, uh, place and ends up growing up and and eventually he's out walking around while people are are doing different things and he notices um, he ends up killing an Egyptian after witnessing one of his fellow Hebrews being beaten and he ends up fleeing to Midian to escape Pharaoh and then he meets this girl named Zipporah and they get married and now he's working for his father-in-law tending sheep so he's kind of got this going on and it's in this moment that God calls him to make it count. 
So here's what it says. One day Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. And he led the, fo- the flock far into the wilderness, and he came to Sinai, the mountain of God. And there the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the middle of a bush. Now that didn't just happen every day. You know, you're not just out doing, doing yard work and something catches on fire. Well, maybe it does, but it shouldn't. Okay? <laughs> but there's this blazing fire that happens from the middle of a bush, and Moses is like, what is happening? And he just stares in amazement. And though the bush is engulfed in flames, it didn't burn up. This is amazing, Moses said to himself. Why isn't that bush burning up? I must go see it. And when the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look, God called to him from the middle of the bush. This is Moses' calling to make it count. He says, Moses, Moses, here I am. Or he says, Moses, Moses. And he says, here I am, Moses replied. God says, don't come any closer, the Lord warned. Warned, Take off your sandals. Let's read it together. For you are standing on holy ground. Anywhere that God is, um, is holy ground. In fact, when we ask Jesus into our heart, we are the temple of God. We become that holy ground. He says, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And when Moses heard this, he covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. And then the Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cries of distress. Let's say that together. I have heard their cries of of distress. So Moses' calling comes from a burden because of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, I am aware of their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them out of Egypt into their own fertile and spacious land. It's a land flowing with milk and honey, the land where the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites now live. It took me a week to get all those down. (laughs) Look, The cry of the people of Israel has reached me, and I have seen how harshly the Egyptians abused them. Now go. So now he's telling, he's giving him a command. He says, now go, for I'm sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people Israel out of Egypt. But Moses protested, God, who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? So he's doubting himself. He's doubting what God's telling him. And so what happens next is Moses peppers God with questions and excuses. Questions and excuses. Say that with me. Questions and excuses. Because we don't do that today, do we? Well, you know, God, you're calling me to invite my friend to church here. I mean, who am I? You know, who am I? God, I, 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 you're calling me to ministry. I mean, I'm not questioning your judgment, your God, but have you, have you taken a look at me? Questions and excuses as to why he isn't the right one to go. But Moses protested again. What if they don't believe me or listen to me? What if they say the Lord never appeared to you? And then the Lord asked him, what's that in your hand? It's a shepherd's staff, Moses replied. So then God has, has him throw the staff down and it turns into a snake. He has him put it, pick it back up and it turns into a staff. He tells him to... Do this miraculous sign, and then, get, and then he gives him a second miraculous sign involving putting his hand in his cloak, and it comes out with leprosy. He puts it back in his cloak and pulls it back out, and he doesn't have leprosy. And Moses still says, after these signs, right, the staff becomes a snake, his hand is afflicted, and then it isn't, and God's proven to him, I'm going to be with you. Moses still says, send someone else, and God There's a lot to this story, but God eventually says, well, Aaron will speak for you. And Moses finally goes to Pharaoh. So the question that we're looking at today is what are you doing with the time you have and the talents and abilities that you've been given? Questions and excuses and reasons why we can't. But what are you doing with the time you have and the talents and the abilities you've been given? Say that with me. What are you doing with the time you have and the talents, the abilities you've been given? Can I tell you today, we all have time. You hear the statement, I don't have any time. We all have time. It's just what we prioritize that time doing. And whether we want to believe it or not, because we have some people, not just kids and teenagers, 
We asked some adults, if you were to ask them what they're good at, they would say, I can't think of anything. But the reality is we are all made in the image of God. Amen? Last time I checked, we are all made in the Imago Dei, the image of God, and we all have talents and abilities that he's given us to be used to build God's kingdom, to make it count. So here's just a few observations uh, from our passage of Scripture today that will help us this morning. First of all, Moses started with having a real encounter with God that was a game changer for him. In other words, it's really hard for us to discern how God wants us to use our time and how God wants us to use our talents if we don't have a a real encounter with Jesus. In fact, encountering Jesus in a real and fresh way, it provides us with the clarity we need to see the mission that God has called us to. That's good. When we have that encounter with Jesus, in fact, I would ask those online and all of us here today, when's the last time you had a fresh encounter with God? December 18th, 1999 was a great day. That's the day I married my wife. And we had a great, we had a great service and we, you know, we encountered each other. I watched her walk down the aisle and and her dad, I don't know if he was nervous or just didn't want to give her to me, but he stood there with her for a while, you know, and, and I mean, it was just awesome, right? That was a great time in my, in our life. But if that's the last encounter we had with each other, if that's the last relationship moment that we had together, that's going to get pretty stale, right? Some of us sitting in here, you've asked Jesus into your heart, but let me ask you this. When's the last time you had a real fresh encounter with him, where you woke up in the morning, or, or maybe it was over your lunch hour, or maybe it was in the car, where he spoke to you or, you, or you listened to him and what he had to say. You see, it's those encounters with Christ. It's those burning bush moments. It's not always a burning bush. Sometimes it's just a sense. Sometimes it's a word from God. But that experience, that time where God speaks to you. Some of you have heard the story. Paul had an encounter with Christ, and it, and it led to his testimony. In fact, Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament, had experienced all kinds of things, but he's being kind of grilled, and he shares his testimony out of that. He's preaching, and he says, God tells me, he says, yes, I'm sending you to the Gentiles to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. Then they will receive forgiveness for their sins and be given a place among God's people who are set apart by faith in me. Paul had an encounter with Christ that changed his life. And God said, I want to make your life count, not just for your own selfish reasons, but for my glory. Are you living your life? This is an important question for us to consider today. Are you living your life to glorify you or glorify someone else? Or are you living your life to glorify God? You were created to glorify and honor and build God's kingdom. But here's the thing. We can't do his kingdom stuff until we let go of our kingdom stuff. Amen? That's truth today. We can't do God's kingdom stuff until we're ready to let go of of our kingdom stuff. Maybe today, God's not calling you to something right away. He's calling you to let go of something. What are you doing with the time you have and the talents and the abilities that you've been given? That's the question for all of us today. Moses had a real encounter with God that was a game changer for him. And this morning, I just want you to know before we move on, You can have that experience with him today. The Bible tells us if we confess with our mouth and believe in our hearts that we can be saved. And not only that we can be saved, but we can also pursue a deeper walk with him. There's something called sanctification. It's a a choice. It's a decision. It's a a saying, God, not only am I going to let you in the car of my life with salvation... But God, today, I'm going to let you drive. I'm going to let you drive our marriage. I'm going to, I'm going to allow you to drive where, where I get a job at. I'm going to allow you to drive my words and how I speak. I'm going to allow you to have control of the music that I listen to, the, the movies that I watch, where my feet go. God, I surrender to you. Someone today can ask Jesus into their heart, and someone else who's already asked Jesus in their heart can go deeper with him today. We just have to say, God, I want more of you. 
And somebody today who has gifts and abilities and time that's been laying dormant can activate that today by simply choosing to do so. Well, not only did Moses have an encounter with God, but Moses' past didn't disqualify him from serving God, and neither does yours, right? I briefly mentioned it, but I want to just remind, want to rewind for just a minute. I want to share with you about Moses. And we're going to back up a little bit. Many years when Moses had grown up, he went out to visit his own people, the Hebrews. And he saw how hard they were forced to work. And during the visit, he saw an Egyptian beating one of his fellow Hebrews. After looking in all directions to make sure no one was watching, Moses killed the Egyptian and hid the body in the sand. The next day, when Moses went out to visit his people again, he saw two Hebrew men. They were fighting. Of course, he goes up to him. He's like, hey, listen, why are you beating up your friend? Moses said to the one who had started the fight. And the man replied, who appointed you to be our prince and judge? Aren't you the guy that, that killed the Egyptian yesterday? Well, then Moses got afraid. He started thinking, everyone knows what I did. And sure enough, Pharaoh heard what happened, and he tried to kill Moses. So Moses fled from Pharaoh and went to live in the land of Midian. Despite this whole situation, God wasn't done with Moses. And God's not done with you. See, your past doesn't have to define your present or determine your future. Amen? Amen. Say that with me. Your past doesn't have to define your present or determine your future. Because we think about what to say to people that we know who don't know Jesus. Start with that. We all know people. We have neighbors that live next to us. We have classmates that we go to school with. We have coworkers that we work alongside. We have employees. We have employers. Everyone that we come in contact with. When, when we start doing his kingdom stuff instead of our kingdom stuff, we don't look at Monday morning just as a, you know, this thing that we got to do. But rather we start to say, God, how can you show me today how to glorify you? God, how can I spread your love to others? Because your past doesn't have to define your present or even determine your future. What are you doing with the time that you have and the talents and abilities that you've been given? Something, I, I say this all the time, but I am not the originator of it. I don't know where I was at when I heard it. It might have been a message online or Somebody in my life that said it to me, but it's true, and I steal it and use it. Delayed obedience falls into the category of disobedience. Delayed obedience falls into the disobedience category. When we, Because a lot of us who are believers, it's not that we, we don't really say God no. Maybe we do, but most of us probably don't do that. We just either don't respond. Did you know that sometimes your kids, they have selective hearing? My wife thinks I have selective hearing. I do. She'll say, have you taken the trash out? I'm sorry, what? What, 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 what did you say? Are you breaking up? I don't know what you're saying. You know, yeah, you talk to your child, or maybe you're a worker or employer, and you talk to, you know, and people act like they didn't hear you. We, it's like we do that with God. It's not that we're going to tell God no, so we just we didn't hear what he said. But when we've heard from God, sometimes it's hard to know what he's telling us. But when we've heard for God, from, from God and we know what he's telling us to do, it falls into the disobedience category when we don't do it. Delayed obedience is disobedience. So Moses had an encounter with God. Moses' past did not disqualify him from serving God, and neither does yours. And finally, Moses went to Pharaoh. I mean, he eventually did what he was called to do. So Moses, after all this stuff happens, Moses took his wife and his sons, put them on a donkey, let's read it, and headed back to the land of Egypt. And in his hand, he carried the staff of God. God was calling Moses to lead by using what was in his hand. I don't know if you remember that earlier when we were talking about that. Moses has given God all these excuses, and finally he's just like, well, what's in your hand? 
nothing, a shepherd's staff. And God's like, throw it down. What for? Just throw it down. And it turns into a snake. I'd have, I'd have ran. I hate snakes. Anybody else hate snakes? Yeah, the rest of you are weird, okay? <laughs> I hate snakes. Noah, my son Noah, my son Luke has a snake skin in his room, and I said, don't bring Grandma in here. She'll have a heart attack. <laughs> but he throws it on the ground. It turns into a snake. He says, pick it back up. He picks it, picks it back up. It turns into staff. He says, listen, when you go to Pharaoh, I'm going to do stuff like this. I'm going to reveal who you, listen, you get the groceries, I'll cook the meal, okay? Just trust me. What's in your hand? It's just a staff. I know, but imagine what God could do if you gave it to him. But Moses protested, what if they won't believe me or listen to me? What if, what if they say the Lord never appeared to me? Then the Lord asked him, let's read it. What is that in your hand? A shepherd's staff, Moses replied. What's in your hand? How is God calling you to use what you have, the resources that you have? Peter, he kind of talks about what's in your hand. He's talking about gifts because all of us have been given spiritual gifts. We've been given things, um, things that are in our hands, so to speak, that can make a difference. I think of the different people. Dave Johnston today got up here and he played, played, played the drums. That's in his hand. Akela Hawkins got up here and she sang a song. That's in his hand. Brian's back there running the camera. Maybe he's back here now. What's in your hand? Well, all I know how to do is to listen to people. Man, there's a lot of people that need to talk. Well, you know, I'm, I'm 80 years old. I can't do anything anymore. Well, can you pray? I have some elderly people that were in my life that they, are, they prayed for me and that made all the difference in my life. Listen to what Peter said. He said, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Let's read it. Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Listen, we, I think I mentioned this last week, and we've said it before. One of the most powerful things you can do to help others is simply asking, what can I do to help? In fact, some of you have never said this before, so let's just say this right now, that your spouse sitting next to you is going to fall over in the chair. Are you ready? One, two, three. What can I do? Now let's say that like we really mean it. You ready? Because some of you, I could tell, you're like, I ain't saying that. Okay? Let's try it again. You ready? What can I do to help? Third time's a charm. What can I do? Okay. How powerful is that? How powerful is that? We are all given a gift. How are we using it? Remember that the reason that God sent Moses was because God had heard the cries of distress. Remember that earlier when we were reading that? The people are in distress. In fact, this is a different story, but... Gideon is called out of being a farmer into, into doing all these amazing things because the people were in distress. Did you know that God may very well use your gifts and abilities to help people who are in distress or to help someone who just has a need or, or just encouraged? Man, what would it look like just to text someone, what can I do to help? People are positively impacted when we say yes to God. Now, when, when God called me in the ministry, I told him no over and over and over. And finally, I said yes. And I thought, well, man, I've got him off my back, right? I'm going to do this. And he's going to stop making me feel horrible inside, right? Because I know I'm called to do this. I have no way of knowing how my life was going to be impacted and how I could impact and you're the same way. There are people around you that when you say yes to God, their life is impacted. I want to just share with you for just a second um, 
So a few ways that you can serve not only um, in your community or, in, or, or wherever you're at, but also here in the church. Um, there in front of you, there is a little pocket there, and we have these little sign-up sheets. And I, I want to just ask you this morning, is there something you could do to serve in the church? Is there a way that you could help grow the body of Christ? We've got two sides to it. One side says, I would love to serve in the following areas, children ministry, teen ministry, college ministry, music worship, greeters, first impressions. Um, when I was, I think, 10 or 11 years old is when my family started going to church here. And Minnie Terry isn't able to come all the time, but Minnie is probably in her 80s or 90s now. And she was standing at that front door. I was 10 years old. I still remember this, and I'm 46, 45. <laughs> she was standing at the front, at the door over there on that east side. And we walked through the door for the first time. And she said, well, good morning. What's your name? How are you guys doing? And we just started talking to us. She was so warm and friendly. Don't underestimate the power of just greeting someone, making them feel welcome. Hospitality is a gift. Being a small group leader... <laughs> Um, the tech team, hospitality, buildings and maintenance, finance, there's all kinds of things that you could grab and sign up and be a part of in some way. Now, we've got on the other side, of it, we've got a not sure how, where you would serve. Some of you'd say, I don't even know what I want to do. Okay, well, on the back here, um, we, we, there's a few questions that maybe help guide you on ways that you can get involved. And then obviously, if you want to drop that off, you can drop that off in the in the boxes. It's not just our church. There's other things that you could do to serve. Some of you would say, well, I don't know what my giftedness is. I asked Pastor Adam. Um, he said this is a good spiritual gifts test that people could take. Take a picture of it with your phone if you want. It's just a 10-minute little test to tell you what, what your gifts are, what, what your spiritual gifts could be. But the bigger question is, what are you doing with the time that you have and the talents and the abilities that you've been given? Say that with me. What are you doing with the time you have and the talents and the abilities that you've been given? Moses said, well, I was farming for my father-in-law. That's what I was doing with. I was just kind of farming, and Zipporah and I met, you know, on eHarmony. We just kind of hung out together, and we were just scraping by, and this bush catches on fire, and then God starts talking to me, and I'm like, what is going on? And in the midst of all that craziness, God speaks. It's not always a burning bush. Sometimes it is. Most of the time, it's not. Sometimes it's just in a still, small voice. So here's what I'd ask before we miss this moment. If you're a child, if you're a teenager, if you're a college student, if you're an adult, if you're retired... If you're in a nursing home watching right now and you don't feel like you have any meaning, I just want to ask you this question. David took his armor off and he, he was able to accomplish a whole lot with just a few rocks against a nine foot nine, 500 pound giant. Don't do the math when it comes to helping. I'm in a nursing home. I know we have lots of people that watch from the nursing home. I'm in the nursing home. There's nothing I can do. Don't, don't do the math on that. Just ask the question of God. Well, I'm just a teenager. What could I do? Don't do the math. Ask the question. Adults, like, I have so much. I'm so busy. You don't know. I'm not trying. Like, some people are like, you know, they brag about how busy they are. And you're like, that's not even me. I'm not just trying to brag. But seriously, I am so busy. I do not have time. Listen, don't do the math. Just ask the question in faith. Amen? Because when we start asking, we start doing the math, we talk ourselves out of things, right? That's why they sell treadmills in March when you buy them in January. You start doing the math, you're like, oh, forget this. This is going to take way too long. I'm not talking from personal experience, right? But listen, what would happen if we would just stop doing the math and just trust him? Because the math says that staff doesn't have the, you know, the properties to become a snake. The math says if I've got leprosy on my hand, sticking it back in my coat is not going to clean it up. 
The math says if Jesus spits mud in my eye, all of a sudden I'm going to be able to see. That doesn't make any sense. The math says if the bread and the fish, there's only one guy who was responsible enough to remember to bring food to this thing, that all of a sudden he's going to be able to feed all those people. Well, if you did the math, you just tell him to go to Quiznos or something. And the math says when you've been trying really hard to have a child and you finally have a child and God says go up the mountain and sacrifice this child, the math says don't take the trip. But we forget about the ram in the thicket, right? Man, that's good. That wasn't in here. I don't want to be a church that's just doing the math all the time and talking ourselves out of things because we're retired and we're too old. Or, or we're not doing something because we're too young. Or for some of us, we're just too busy. I don't have the time to serve on that. I'm too busy. Just don't answer the question. Just ask it. So here's my challenge to us. And no one's going to answer, you're not going to answer this, and I'm not going to ask it, but how many of us would be willing to ask that question this morning while the band comes up or invite the band up? And during, I think we've got two songs. What would happen if you would not do the math and you would simply say, God, take my time. Take my talents. Take my abilities. You customize my life how you want it. And can I tell you today, if we would do that, between those that are online watching and those of us that are in here today, God's going God's to talk to some of us today. And there are people, this is the part that gets me, there are people who are impacted that you and I can't see, that are impacted by if you say yes, and if you say no. Let's read that question one more time and then we'll stand. What are you doing with the time you have and the talents and abilities you've been given?